So welcome to this very special Motorsport Magazine podcast in association with Mercedes-Benz. Hey Jack, have them. Um, I've got new ones. They look really grown up. Very smart, Jack. <laughs> that your sisters? <laughs> Can I have that? Jack? I like the way you work it. No diggity. I got to bag it up. Bag it up. I like the way you um, today it's very special because I think you'll recognise my guest, uh, Nico Rosberg, the current Formula One world champion, and we're here at the fabulous surroundings of the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Um, thanks for joining us, Nico. It's, um, it's great to see you here. Uh, thank you very much. I'm uh, happy to be on your podcast. Uh, since I am an avid subscriber, is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yeah, I wasn't aware until you just told me, but you're, you're a fan of the mag. It's good to hear. Yeah, because I love the, I, I love the history of our sport. I love the little old stories and everything, so um, I do follow. Excellent stuff. Right, so today we're going to ask Nico uh, a number of questions, and we've had a, a, an incredible response from our readers as well. So we're going to talk um, about Formula One, past and present, and um, we're going to talk about Nico's life today. Um, but what I'd like to do is actually it, it take you back to, I think, 2003. Now, you, you probably won't remember this, but I interviewed you at the rep in 2003. And it was when you tested the Williams with Nelson Piquet Jr. Oh wow, yeah. Um, that was a one hell of a shootout. Yeah, and it was a shootout, wasn't it? That was oh, for sure, yeah. It was, um, it was to get the job of uh, being Williams test driver, you know, which was huge at the time. Yeah, this was, um, it was my first proper job as a journalist as well. So it's, just, you know, it's a long, long time ago, fond memories of that. Do, do, you, do you feel you were, you were ready for that shootout? I mean, incredibly experienced, but that was a high pressure situation for someone at, at your point in your career. Um, yeah, I was ready at the time, yeah. I mean, it was a big one and, um, and definitely intense, but, uh, but yeah, I was ready and, um, and I think uh, I managed to do a good job because in the end it got me, um, it got me the, the test driver role. Yeah, absolutely. So, we've got the, uh, typically we've got the noisiest group to, uh, to host our podcast. I think we've seen some indie cars go past here. Um, so, so tell me, as you, as you worked your way up through um, the, the lower formula, did you kind of acclimatise to the high performance cars? Or did the point when you got in a Formula 1 car for the first time, did it still blow your mind, the performance of it? This I'll never forget. It's, um, I was racing Formula BMW that had 140 horsepower. And then uh, I won the championship and um, BMW, so Mario Tyson and Gerhard Berger, arranged for me to get a test because I won the Formula BMW championship. Um, and then driving out of the pit lane, I stamped on the throttle just flat out, yeah? And this thing had 930 horsepower. So I went from 140 to 930. And it was the most insane experience. It was like a rocket ship. I mean, a spaceship taking off, yeah? yeah. Unbelievable. But having that natural uh, ability with race cars in the end, I was in it then straight away as well, you know? It yeah. was massively fast, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, I could feel the limit quite quickly and so I uh, got on with it. Yeah. I guess there's an inevitable question, is that kind of buzz, that, that thrill that you, you had and you sustained through your career, how do you satisfy that now that you're, that you're not driving? Um, well, I can still drive, uh, drive the old race car, of course, uh, yeah. good go-karting and things like that, which I've been doing. Yeah. Um, that will never change, still, uh, still love doing that, but um, also, uh, you know, passion for me was, was competing as well, competing mm. and winning, and that I'm going to seek other avenues for that in the future, you know, more in the business world, yep. um, where I can compete and, and win there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, we have so many questions from our readers. I have to, I have to dive straight in, otherwise we won't, we go, won't get through them. Um, this is a, a rather a tense one to start with. Did you ever have sudden throttle off issues um, at starts, restarts with Lewis? And that's from Doug Stark. Dear Doug, <laughs> what are you trying to get out with this question? <laughs> I think Doug's Im implying something that happened. I mean, I, I guess you've been asked a million times about the Vettel Hamilton incident. Yeah. But, I um, mean, what, what's your take on it? Um, well, I am the guy, probably the best positioned guy to make a judgment because <laughs> I know Lewis best, better than anybody else in the racing world. Yeah. Um, and I can I can say that uh, he wouldn't, uh, he didn't do that on purpose. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it is, uh, you know, he nearly ran up the back of me in uh, in Sochi once in exactly the same scenario, right. where a safety car, well similar, safety car deployed and I didn't accelerate out of the corner. 
because um, the safety guard was deployed, so I had to slow down, and he nearly ran into the back of me. And then Kimi Raikkonen nearly ran into the back of him. Right. Um, and it's just, uh, yeah, then, uh, but that's the main part anyways, that he didn't yeah. do it on purpose. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you, Doug. That was, um, I was slightly nervous about opening the questions with that one, but um, I think we have the answer. Um, What's your take? So my take is, um, I don't think he did it on purpose, no. I think that he was doing exactly what he was allowed to do. He was controlling the pace in the way that he was, he was allowed to do. Now, the response afterwards um, from Sebastian was um, actually was slightly heartbreaking. I don't like to see that from my motor racing heroes. I don't like to see the car being used as a... Um, a punch. So I was. You didn't find it exciting in front of the TV. I, I found it exciting in front of the TV, but I don't like to see. Well, that must a have been exciting being, as enjoyable. <laughs> I like I like uh, wheel to wheel racing. But being excited <laughs> is something that is enjoyable. It is enjoyable. Yeah, it's the um, it's so the intentional like? intentional hit is what I didn't like. The intentional hit is what you didn't yeah. like. Mm. You've never done that, have you? Um, no. No. There we go. Right. This is from Jamie Smith. Do you feel a sense of relief that you're not having to sustain the tension of a championship fight this year? And has it made, um, and will, will you race historics just for fun? Um, fighting for the championship and battling Lewis, you know, that's, uh, that was one of the most passionate things and it's what got me going and got me up in the morning, you know, that was the big motivation and the thrill. Uh, yeah. And trying to beat Lewis and trying to get better and better myself. So um, um, that was uh, part of what made it so special. Um, and has it made the? And have you, will you ever maybe race you raced in historics? Is that um, like historics? No, no, because uh, they are too dangerous. Otherwise, otherwise, of course, it would be fun. But uh, no, that's not for me. No historics then for Nico. Okay, this is from Caroline Berry. Um, which is your favourite? This is your favourite trophy aesthetically. Um, and P.S. Thanks for your autograph at Silverstone last year. I'm so proud you became world champ. Uh, hi, hi Caroline. Caroline or Caroline? Uh, Caroline. I think Caroline. Caroline. Caroline Berry. Uh, thanks for your question. That's a very easy one. I would say the World Championship Trophy gets beaten by the um, Silverstone Winners Trophy. The big disappointment there is that you get to hold it for five minutes <laughs> and then never see it again. So um, <laughs> that's not <laughs> ideal because it gets straight back, put straight back into the safe because it's uh, the most historic we have in our sport. Yeah. Um, being, I think, 75 years old or something crazy. So it's a very, very special one. And um, I haven't done any replicas for any of my trophies, but that one I would consider doing because um, it's just uh, yeah. the most beautiful. Excellent. Great question there, Caroline. Um, this and good, what about good, good answer? The yeah, answer was okay. You know, it wasn't bad. I was thinking that maybe there would be a, a cart trophy or something, you know, something weird with back in the days, like a tiny little trophy like that, you know? Uh, no? No. <laughs> Okay, Tony Chan. Hi, Nico. A lot of respect for your decision to retire at the top. Two questions. If um, you may. If you may, yeah. What were you going to study at Imperial, and do you think that your IQ gave you an advantage over the others who did not have that? Well, there's a... Oops. <laughs> uh, hi, Tony. Um, well, thank you that you respect my decision. Of course, there's no right and wrong, but uh, glad to have your respect for that. I can't... Oh, um, and uh, my IQ. Yeah, I mean, do you think how I, what was I going to study in Imperial? I was going to study aeronautics, which is uh, mainly about the aerodynamics of racing cars. Um, my IQ, difficult for me to speak about my IQ, but I would like to say that I think my um, passion for the engineering, for the, for the engineering uh, behind the race cars or on the race car, um, for sure gave me a bit of an advantage here and there. Yeah, yeah sure thing. Okay, um, speaking of which, there is a, um, a Mercedes.me app which um, I must plug actually, this is a telematics app that can be retrofitted from uh, to Mercedes cars from the late 90s with an adapter. Um, this app is available on the um, app and play stores and um, I urge you to check it out. So that's mercedes.me. How much do you get paid for that? <coughs> Not enough. Not, Not enough. enough. How much do you get paid that was for that? That was advertisement though, wasn't it? Well, this is in association with Mercedes-Benz. Um, Mercedes have very kindly supported these podcasts for the uh, last two years or so. So it's... Um, it's, it's not easy to commercialise all parts of the media, so um, we're very grateful for uh, to Rob Halloway in particular, um, and to Rory and all the, the guys on the uh, guys and girls on the press team. So um, yeah, hopefully um, that did the job. So that wasn't that, that, was, that wasn't supposed to be negative. Yeah, it was just, uh, I know. I just know. thought it was. Uh... <laughs> right. Okay. We have. We'll go on to Matt in South Korea. 
after Alonso's departure from McLaren in 2007, you were heavily linked with McLaren and it was reported that Williams refused to release you from your contract. How close did we come to seeing you and Hamilton in the same team for 2008? Right. Uh, these are things that I think I need to wait to talk about for in the, maybe in 10 years time or something. Um, but yes, there was discussions and uh, all what you say is, um, is um, not 100% correct, but um, there's some, uh, what do you say, some substance to it? Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to go into more detail than that. And in 10 years time, you can ask again. Okay, there you go, Matt, in South Korea, 10 years time. He also says, thanks for parking your Mercedes near where I was sitting when you ran out of fuel at the finish of the 2011 Korean Grand Prix. My, my great pleasure, that was. <laughs> Excellent. Right, Kevin Joyce, of all of your pole position laps and race wins, could you pick a top three of each and why? Um, I would go Monaco 2013. It was my first Monaco win with pole position there in a very, very difficult qualifying because it was wet to, wet to start with. Um, then I would say, uh, and that's the race win as well. Then I would go, I would jump to um, Singapore 2016, which was definitely one of the best for me in my whole career. Uh, pole position there by more than half a second. Yeah. Um, and then uh, and then winning under immense pressure from Red Bull. And then the third one, I think I'd just like to leave it with those two for now. Um, don't really, the third one doesn't, doesn't come to my mind at the moment. Sure, no problem. Okay, um, from Adrian King, do you feel you were fairly judged in performance terms when you were matched against Michael Schumacher? As the general consensus was that he was a spent force during his time with the team. From Adrian King. Um, do I feel that I was fairly judged? Um, not sure, because uh, of course he wasn't as good as, in his, as he was in his prime. I mean, I think that's a, that's a, a fact. But he was still doing a great job, and um, and at times he was still very, very impressive. It was a little bit the consistency that was lacking, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, so maybe not quite fairly judged, no. Mm -hmm. um, but then you know once Lewis came, then it was uh, then my level became very clear to everybody. Thank you, Adrian King. Great question there. Um, Shay C, how has your lifestyle changed now that you've retired? Besides the obvious fact that you have more time for yourself and your family. Um, it's a lot more freestyle now. <laughs> Everything was controlled to the last uh, to the last minute in the past, um, which is it's a good feeling. And other than that, um, you're just going for different passions now. You know, I mean, I'm still passionate about competition and winning, so uh, I'm uh, seeking avenues um, for that in the business world now more than anything. Um, I love innovation, um, engineering, so some things are going that direction. Cars, of course. Um, but let's see, you know, I mean, uh, I have a lot of, I mean, I have a lot going on, of course, already, but uh, the, the, the challenge will be because I do enjoy having millions of people join in into my journey, you know, like, like in F1, when you get, when you can emotionally move so many people, yeah. that's very, very special, but that's not easy to replicate again, you know, in a different avenue, um, so that's going to be the big challenge to see um, what I'm going to be able to come up with in that direction. Okay. Maybe this question is, is linked, actually, from, from Shay again. I've heard that you read books on philosophy. Any recommendations? I, w I wonder if your interest in philosophy is, is helping you in this sort of transition stage in, in, your, in your life. Yeah, I love um, personal development, mm -hmm. you know, becoming a better person, um, becoming more, uh, more and more, um, more and more well-being, and also uh, a better person for the people around you, you know? Um, and this has definitely uh, helped me a lot through my whole career and especially in the title fight then with Lewis in the very end and, and now in my new life as well. And um, I can only recommend to dig into the whole subject to everybody, uh, but to find your own way. And, uh, for, and then if I had to give one, um, I, would, I would probably start up with something like the monk who sold his Ferrari. <laughs> Um, just to, as a first, uh, it's very superficial, you know, but just as a first insight, it can be, be quite interesting. Yeah. Do you feel you ever stop learning either about your, yourself or, or about um, any subject you're, you're, you're interested in? Um, no, you never stop learning because um, us humans, we're quite complex and there's always uh, progress to be made. Okay, over to, let's have a look. Um, Anthony Jenkins. Nico, congratulations on your world championship and courageous personal decision to retire. Other than your father, who were your heroes in racing? Um, Mika Hakkinen for sure, because he was yeah. racing Schumacher and my dad was managing him, so I was a big fan. Um, and then, uh, who else would I say? Um, uh, let's go with that one. 
Mick Hackinen. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, we got. Um, we haven't got much you? time now. Um, Your top three. My top three. Uh, Nigel Mansell. Um, Apart from uh, Hamilton, because I know you're such a massive uh, Hamilton fan. I, th I I think Hamilton is a great driver. Um, that's that's a that's a tricky one to answer. And uh, Nico, I think to be honest, you know. I think because because we met all those years ago, which you've clearly forgotten. Um, no, I've always followed your career, and I think to be honest, everyone in the motorsport office were absolutely chuffed to bits. I think is the expression we'd use that, that you won the championship last year because it was well deserved. Thank um, you. That's nice to hear. No, Thank no you. problem at all. Please, your um, top three. Come on. So my top three. Um, You're not very good at rapid Nigel fire questions. Nigel Mansell. Ayrton Senna, um, Brian Redman, I think, would be my, my top three. Okay. Yeah. Nigel Mansell, yeah, big Nigel fan Mansell of the time, yeah? My, well, he just bullied a car to victory, didn't he? <laughs> you know? Come, what's your thoughts on Nigel? You must have met him a few times. Yeah, I've met him, and of course, I, I can understand why he had such a passionate following, you know? Because uh, of the way he went at it, you know, and the, the entertainer that he was also and everything. Yeah. For sure, uh, great. Good stuff. Right, okay, we've only got a few more questions now, so I'm going to have to, let's have a look. Let's just jump in. Um, there was a lot of people asking if you were still on the grid. I think, I, I think you've probably been asked that a million times, so... If what? If you, if you were still on the grid, if, you, if, you was, if you'd like to be in F1 this year. Well, no, otherwise I would be there. <laughs> it's, it's probably the most, most popular question here. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, from, from a Mark Webber, um, is this quote true? Britney's I don't think so, wall. mate. Britney's in the wall. Unfortunately, I think it is true. Oh, goodness me. Should we, should we dwell on that one or should we put that one to bed? Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Okay, let's he pick... Doesn't, he doesn't say that anymore though, which is good. Yeah, he's a, he's a good lad. Um, okay, so how do you... Uh, this is the last one. Let's talk about driving style. Um, can you uh, compare your driving style to your dad's? And this is from at Paul F1B. I think my dad was much more Nigel Mansell-like, um, bullying the car and being a bit more uh, dramatic and, and over the top. And I'm, I was much more smooth and uh, and controlled. I think. Yeah. yeah. But there's no, there's no, you know, right or wrong. Um, maybe in his time, that driving style, because reliability was such an issue, maybe it was a small, uh, small negative sometimes in that sense. Yeah. Um, but super fast, of course. Yeah. Have you ever had a chance to kind of go head to head with your dad in go karts, or just? Away yeah. from a bit of fun. I have a great story. I'm 12 years old and I'm uh, doing my first uh, big go kart test for the junior category, which is the first serious category international. And, uh, and my dad tested with me. Um, so it was like a father son uh, thing just for some fun. And of course, my dad for me is the world champion, he's uh, going to be unbeatable, you know, and I'll be nowhere near him in a go kart, you know. And, uh, and he was a complete waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't understand what's going on. You know, this guy is like supposed to be so damn good in a race car, so slow, so far off the pace. And uh, and that was really shocking, shocking for me. You know, my my hero. Um, and now years later, I understand because yeah. myself, when I get back into a go kart, it's a different world. And yeah. to go fast in a go kart takes so much time. Yeah. Like you get in there first time and you're seconds off the pace. Yeah. And so I understand now, but at the time it was a bit of a shock. Yeah. Okay, we're going to wrap it up now, Nico. It was an absolute pleasure to spend some time with you here today. Okay. Um, this thanks is a lot to all the people watching and to all the readers of uh, Motorsport. Uh, thanks, Nico. So, um, yeah, stay, stay tuned for other podcasts in the future. It's um, the Motorsport Magazine website. And also um, be sure to check out mercedes-benz.co.uk for the latest news from Mercedes-Benz. Thank you again, Nico. Pleasure. That was great. Right. Hey, Jack. Have them. I've got new ones. You look really grown up. Very smart, Jack. <laughs> that your sister's. <laughs> Can I have that? Jack. I like the way you work it. No diggity. I got to bag it up. Bag it up. I like the way you